Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Aptera Reboot. Today I want to take a look at the top 3 reasons that I find in the comments as to why some people believe that Aptera will fail. Now some of these reasons are just based in fear, and others have some pretty legitimate merit and need to be addressed. It's obvious that I'm a huge fan of the mission of Aptera, and sometimes as fans we tend to only focus at the positives and ignore all of the issues. I don't want to be that kind of a fan, so I want to take these concerns seriously. And after I take a look at the three most common comments as to why some people believe have terrible fail, I'm going to give you my personal concerns, so stay tuned for that. But you know sometimes, one of the big reasons why some of the things we enjoy fail is that we forget to support them. So if you like the content I've been putting out on this channel, take a minute right now to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. I'm absolutely amazed by the support I've been receiving from so many of you out there. So a big thank you to everyone who's watched, liked, or commented on any of my videos, and a special thank you to everyone who has subscribed and hit that notification bell, and an extra special thank you to my patrons. To celebrate the channel hitting 1000 subscribers, just type in first 1000 in the comment section and on the next video I'll announce who the winner is. The winner will receive an item from the Aptera Reboot Store. Now let's get on with the show. The three most common reasons I find that people believe that Aptera will fail are that it failed before, therefore it'll fail again. The second has to do with whether or not the vehicle is safe. And the third is the fact that the Aptera only seats two passengers. So let's address these concerns one at a time. One of the most common objections I see to the new Aptera is the failure of the old Aptera. At first glance, it seems reasonable to say, if you couldn't bring the Aptera to market before, what makes you think you could do it now? After all, a lot of the legacy automakers are starting to make their own electric vehicles, and of course, don't forget about Tesla. The main reasons why Aptera failed the first time are multiple. Aptera was creating a new vehicle in a new sector without any manufacturing experience, and so the team decided to bring in automobile industry experts. The experts that they brought in insisted on high volume production and obtaining government loans almost from the beginning. Unlike the old Aptera, the new Aptera has a crawl, walk, run strategy, which almost exclusively relies on private investment. In addition to that, both Steve Fambro and Chris Anthony have gone on to found companies outside of Aptera, so hopefully they'll be able to bring back a lot of that experience into Aptera. Something else to consider is the fact that the EV sector is a lot more mature means that it's going to be a lot easier for the team at Aptera to source parts they need for the vehicle. The second concern that people have is regarding safety. The question comes up time and again, is it safe? One thing I could say is that the team at Aptera are designing the vehicle to exceed all passenger car standards. Although this is an ambitious goal, Aptera has already proven that they can at least build safe prototypes. The vehicles are made from a sandwich composite core consisting of, consisting of carbon fiber, Kevlar, and hemp. According to an official Facebook post on August the 22nd, 2020, Aptera is designing the new vehicle to be even stronger than the previous versions. And really, the bottom line on safety is that we won't really truly know how safe Aptera is until we have actual real-world test results. However, all indications is that the team at Aptera is looking to deliver a very safe road vehicle. The third objection is that the car only seats two passengers. I see this comment a lot, and honestly, I don't know if this is a real problem. 270,000 two-door cars were sold in 2019 alone. If Aptera could capture just 5% of that market, they would need to produce 13,500 vehicles per year just to keep up. Now, outside of the people just wanting to buy a sports car, we already know that EVs are becoming more and more popular each day, with the added bonus of being an amazing speed machine. Now that we've addressed those three common objections, let me give you my concerns. Looking at the project as an outsider, Aptera is very reliant on third parties to manufacture and supply the parts needed for the vehicle. I believe this will open Aptera up to more disruption in production as the different manufacturers have delays on parts at different times. Also, this shifts innovation to suppliers, which means that the next generation of Apteras will only be as good as the parts that third party manufacturers want to make. The upside of this arrangement in the short term is that it allows Aptera to focus on their core competency and also allows them to deliver a very good vehicle to market very quickly. Long term, Aptera will have to acquire some of its suppliers or develop some of these parts in-house. My second concern has to do with marketing of the vehicle. At first glance, Aptera seems like a niche vehicle. 
so it's going to take some work from the marketing department to properly frame all of the positives that the vehicle has to offer. Well, I hope you found this information useful. Please like and subscribe and visit us on Patreon and Teesprings. If you're interested in getting more information about the Aptera, please see the link in the description for a special offer. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.